When it comes to your education, there's no need to settle. Get the interactive and purposeful education that you and employers demand from Colorado State University Global Campus. You'll get personalized, career-driven learning created and taught by today's industry leaders. CSU Global was built to help students succeed with affordability, flexibility, and individualized support. It's time to expect better. Find your path to the career you want at csuglobal.edu, where online education isn't another thing we do. It's all we do. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome, everybody, to Somewhere in Vegas here on Blog Talk Radio. Tom, and now on Spreaker.com, I am Mark the Q. I am your host. I'm very privileged to have a very exciting guest. Um, he has uh, he's a celebrity chef. He's uh, done um, he's uh, cooked for many many great celebrities, um, including Diddy, Diddy, Will Smith, Common, and Tyrese Gibson. Um, and he also has his own little spa, uh, popular spice line, and he's been uh, talking a little bit about um, some of the things that we can do um, to spice up our, our, uh, our cooking nowadays. He's a really great and talented chef. Um, he's on the line with us right now. Ryan Rondino is on with us now, right now. How you doing, Ryan? Good. How you doing? Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, no problem at all. I mean, um, are you in Los Angeles currently? Uh, yes, I'm in uh, Los Angeles currently at the present time. I've been out in Los Angeles for 10 years now. So it's been... Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, you originally from New Orleans. I mean, obviously, um, really great, um, really great um, kind of, um, you know, flavors that you get out there in terms of, of the cuisine. Obviously, a lot of the French, a lot of Creole cuisine out there as well. I mean, um, how's it been for you to be out in L.A. and, and kind of bring some of, your, um, some of your ideas out there? And, I mean, have you learned a lot moving out to L.A.? Uh, yes, I, I can say that I have learned a lot from uh, different chefs, different peers that I've come across, and I've been able to uh, introduce them to my, my my Creole style of cooking. So, you know, things they may have not seen, you know, styles we, uh, or techniques that I've been able to introduce them, uh, I've been able to cross paths, and we've been able to really collaborate and, you know, create some uh, great dishes together. Quite obviously, a lot of the celebrities that you work with, um, you know, have certain dietary dietary restrictions, you know, um, you know, based on, you know, either maybe they're getting ready for a part and they want to look their best, or it's just a situation where they just have a different kind of lifestyle. I mean, how's it been for you, especially with the uh, um, idea of Creole and, and, and French cooking, um, and how you've, have, you, have you been working around that in terms of um, maybe getting some of the things that they like um, with, with your own kind of little flair? Well, I mean, when I'm uh, cooking for celebrities, I'm able to take their likes and dislikes and really hone in, especially if they're on a special diet, if they're training for a movie or whatsoever, and really uh, kind of balance uh, farm-to-table cuisine, you know, especially if they are um, they cut out salt, you know, you're able to, you know, just use a no-salt version of, uh, of a spice. Or just even make your own without the salt. So that's how I'm able to get around it. I mean, what was one of the one of your favorite things to to, to make for a celebrity that may you may have had to uh, kind of create out of your own mind? Mm, that's 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 a broad question. I mean, that, that could be a lot of things. Um, I guess it, it's um, it would depend on the celebrity. Um, some were vegan, so you, that that really challenged you to really. Uh, research different ingredients that um, you can really give to them, so it's not, you know, you're not, it's not redundant. You're not giving them the same thing, so um, uh, that kind of helped. And also, you know, some, you know, they're traditionalists. You know, they they love fried chicken, they love the mac and cheese, um, things of that nature. So you kind of really look to make healthier versions of that. I mean, obviously, you mentioned a lot about the spices and the idea that, you know, you can use those to um, kind of, you know, kind of work around some of the dishes and all that as well to make sure um, they're not only healthy but also tasty as well. I mean, um, you know, how has it been for you to kind of, you know, explore um, some of the spices that that have been around and and kind of start your spice line around that? Um, I think, you know, when I uh, I write menus, I like to explore different cuisines. So not only am I teaching the, the client or um, the consumer, but I'm also teaching myself. 
So it, it's helped me to really explore different spices of the world and really create uh, tie into it for my style of, my style of cooking and really helped me really develop uh, the spice line that I have today. So um, that's how the spice line came about. You know, just, just sitting around in my kitchen, just playing with different rubs, playing with different blends, and just coming, coming up with something special. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, it's kind of interesting. I mean, just, just the idea, like I said, the idea of the spices can help out, you know, in terms of a meal and, and make it make it, make it it tastier. And I think that there's a currently a, a current push to try to, to, to put more spices into things um, just to, to mm-hmm. make sure it's, you know, make sure that, you know, people are, are healthy and, and, and t- you know, making sure that the, the, um, the dishes taste, taste as good as they possibly can as well. I mean, um, you know, have you been seeing on your end the idea of, 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 of the um, spices being more used in, uh, in dishes? Uh, yes, I've, I've been seeing that uh, more and more dishes, uh, more and more people using the spices in dishes. You know, I always, um, I always preach, you know, be bold and season your food. So whether you're cooking California cuisine, Creole cuisine, um, French, Italian, you know, use, use spices and blends of that region to really enhance the dish, enhance the flavor. So you're, you're not only are you seeing chefs do it, but you're also starting to see home cooks do it. And, you know, beginners to advanced cooks. So everyone's catching on and really uh, putting flavorful food in, uh, in their homes. Yeah, I mean, you know, this time of year, there's certain spices that are probably more popular than maybe other times of the year as well. I mean, um, you know, how's it for you in terms of, you know, um, working with spices um, during this, like, maybe the holiday season versus maybe um, a summer or fall or, or spring-type uh, meal? Well, I mean, during, um, during, during the holidays, uh, of course, there's a lot of baking going on. So you, you can, uh, those flavors of cinnamon, nutmeg, star meat, cloves, um, so just to, just to name a few, and using those those, those spices in a savory aspect is uh, I, I wouldn't say it can be tricky because you don't want to overpower your dish, but at the same time it can enhance the dish by using the whole clo- whole spices so I say rather than the ground spices. So um, that also helped me with um, creating flavorful dishes for. Um, the taste. Yeah, um, during, during um, you know, what, what certain uh, dishes have you made for celebrities around the holidays? Were there any certain th- any special requests for them t- for you to make, you know, during kind of the holiday season when, when you were working for them? Um, I don't think there was anything uh, special. I mean, the, the, um, the celebrities that I've, I've worked for, uh, there's you know, have the southern style, the East Coast style. So, you know, say say we have Thanksgiving, we have the turkey, we have the ham, we have the mac and cheese, um, collard greens. So these are some traditional items that you can find yourself cooking. But, you know, we kind of veer off with dessert and, you know, kind of be creative with um, that aspect. So versus, you know, I think the sweet chair versus the pumpkin, or, you know, kind of blending that with a pecan pie so you're making a soup potato pecan pie. So all together in one instead of two pies and separately. So uh, it helps you be creative in that aspect. Yeah, I mean, overall, I mean, have you been seeing any, any certain food trends this season or, you know, something that's, um, you know, that's kind of hot right now in terms of in, in terms of food or what people are doing? Yeah, everyone... I, I'm not going to say everyone, but you see a lot of people going vegetarian and vegan. You know, that route, you know, really transforming um, the fatty holiday menu into a healthy holiday menu. So, um, you know, ways to cook Brussels sprouts in a healthier way. Um, you know, ways to cook mac cheese in a, in a healthier way, um, like stuffing or dressing. How can we make that healthy? Um, dirty rice, how can we make that healthy? So um, you start to see more and more people do that because it's, I guess, you know, 
I'm not gonna say being healthy, but creating a lifestyle. So not 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 just that it's just for a holiday, but they're continuing through the whole year and are starting for the next year, 2019, to come. So it's not the new year, new me uh, sort of aspect. So it's just really uh, maintaining the lifestyle. Yeah, I had Samantha um, at Samantha Goldberg on last week, and we were talking a little bit about some of the food trends that she was seeing. And she was saying that more of the bite-sized, um, bite-sized, um, you know, um, um, hors d'oeuvre or uh, tapas type stuff is kind of currently trending right now as well. Are you kind of seeing the same thing? Yeah, you, 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 uh, you see that as well. Um, you know, people are eating smaller, smaller bites. Um, versus a, a bigger meal. So um, you go out to a restaurant, more more tasting menus are, are developed or so in a smaller portion. So you, you really can enjoy the meal as a whole versus, you know, just one big meal. And maybe you eat it all, maybe you won't. So um, you, you see that aspect all, um, all over the place, all throughout the United States. Yeah, you know, I think, you know, obviously different different situations. Sometimes there's a sit-down meal, and I think what, what Samantha was coming from is basically the uh, the idea of an office party or something like that where, you know, you know, yeah, you do just like to have that little bite-sized, uh, bite-sized, uh, um, bite-sized things just to be able to, to be able to, to have, you know, um, be able to have handy as it were. But, you know, I mean, it, it's great to be able to, to, to kind of see, um, you know, some of, the, some of the things that have been going on in the past couple of years as well. How's it been – How's it been for you to um, kind of interact with the with the people and the fans? I know you, um, you know you you have your own your own website, you have your own blog, and, and you know all your rest of your social media as well. How's it been to kind of interact with some of the some of the people, and have they given you any good ideas? Uh, yeah, I mean you, you always um, receive good ideas from people, and you always you're able to give it and give them back as well. So um, as far as um, social media. I have I have a large network of friends in the business or you know colleagues that I, I'm able to see their work. I'm able to you know feed off and get inspiration of what they do or what they're doing at the present time and you know creative issues that they're putting out or sometimes and not not that aspect or it's just different ingredients that they're working with. So you know just thinking to myself maybe you know I want to try this ingredient you know work with it. And, See what I can come up with. So I'm always, you know, so we always feeding off each other and really um, inspiring each other to get better and better each day. Speaking of being challenged, I mean, obviously you've been on the Food Network several times on several different shows as well. I mean, how's that been for you to to, to kind of challenge yourself that way? And I mean, obviously, it probably gave you some more ideas and on, on certain things that you were, you wanted to try. Uh, I mean, when when I'm when I'm competing, that that aspect pushes the bar. You you don't you don't know what you're walking into, so that creative aspect just automatically just comes out of you. That you know the challenge is within you. So you know you, have, you always ask yourself, you know, can I can I do it? Can I meet this challenge? You know, can I um, can I beat you know this chef next to me? These this these couple of chefs next to me. So. Um, that's always a challenge, and you know, just knowing what you have in hand. Say you have a mystery basket. You know, what are you gonna do with it? How are you gonna transform it into something unique, something special? So, I mean, it, doing those in, in that aspect always challenges me. Challenges me to be a greater chef. Yeah, I mean, one thing about those shows, I think too, is the fact that you know you only have a limited amount of time. I don't know how long, you know, how many, how often that you've done, you've done chopped, but you know, just to getting to know what the, what's what's in the kitchen or where things are, that kind of helps you in that situation. I mean, how was it for you in order to to compete, just to kind of know the uh, to know where things were, and you know, I don't think you got very much time to be able to explore to see where everything is, right? No, you really don't have much time. You just kind of. Um... I think you just have to observe when you walk in, observe where everything is, and um, you know, just know what what steps you, you you're gonna take next. What, what steps? What's the longest step versus the shortest step? What ingredients are you gonna use? So just kind of watching where the equipment is, where 
the pantry is, what certain items are in the pantry, where the spices are, where the dry goods are, 